This week on East West, we meet two exceptional South Africans who came over as English teachers, but have since successfully pursued other avenues in Korea. Cape Town filmmaker Raoul Dysel takes us for a walk around the palace walls while we chat about his second feature film. We feel a little Ubuntu love as we visit his wife Lucy's knitting and crochet store. Then we are off for a glass of wine with Tobias, who imports South Africa's finest wines to Korea for the drinking pleasure of the masses. The nice thing about Seoul is just this little alley that uh, you know I've walked down uh, from the main road. Just 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 coming up here on your left, you're gonna get an art gallery. You know, it's it's just it's interesting to get this traditional architecture blended with you know uh, modern and uh, at times postmodern architecture. We take five for a coffee while Raoul tells us about the journey to becoming the CEO behind Roll the Dice Production Company that boasts with numerous advertisements, music videos, including the official Happy Soul video, and now a second feature film. Okay, so I'm from Cape Town. I uh, grew up in a mixed family. I grew up with the freedom to choose whatever I want to be. When I was 11 and I got my first camera, I didn't get the camera because I wanted to be a filmmaker one day. I got the camera because I wanted a camera. You don't think that that's what you want to be. It comes naturally to you. I wanted to be a storyteller. Film is the best medium on which to express th th that passion of, of telling stories, in my opinion, you know, the visual medium, because it in incorporates both writing, because uh, I'm a screenwriter, and obviously capturing what you write on, on screen. You know, I, I love being surrounded by people from everywhere that are trying to become something that have ambition, that are aspiring to be good or great at something. It's, it's, it's motivating. Anyway, so I went to film school. I studied uh, film and media. I decided that I was going to go to Korea and make a movie. I decided that at about 18, 19 years old. I just wanted to go and I wanted to make stuff. I really wanted to just be out. But I knew the value of the piece of paper that you get from university. That piece of paper gives you access. First thing I did was I wanted to find out if there are any other expats here that want to make movies. I find out that there's a workshop called the Soul Filmmakers Workshop. The guy that I that ran the workshop, his name was Sonny. He became one of my best friends, and um, he and I would go on to uh, co-write and co-direct uh, my first feature film, which was called Amiss. that soul has turned me into the man I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Um, and uh, that over there is my wife's shop, uh, Poco Grande. It's a handmade knitting shop. She teaches classes and she probably creates the most original art uh, as far as knitting goes in this entire city.
like something, some project that can support African lady who doesn't have, who don't have any jobs. Mm -hmm. So they knit and make these kind of dolls yeah. and sell it so they can survive. Yeah. So they can have a job. So your mother-in-law, Raoul's mom. Yes, yeah, she to contacted this company. Mm -hmm. She helped me a lot with this. So these are from Africa. And and uh, and so, how much do you sell these for? Twenty-five thousand. So yeah. Twenty-five dollars. Yeah. And then you send it back to Africa. You send. No, it it's back. when I buy these dolls, it's yeah. all included in the fee. I see what yes. you mean. So you buy them and resell. Yes, them. right. Look at these, we've almost got the big five here. That's incredible. <laughs> and yeah, you can see here the lady, this is Gertrude. You're Shamori with this by Gertrude. And, and it tells you that the... Mm -hmm. And people in Korea cannot see these kind of like wild animals. Yeah. So they love it. But they only can see rabbits or dogs or cats, but not buffalo. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Just like South Africans, Koreans love their barbecue. Raul and Lucy take us out for traditional Korean braai, samgyeopsal. Everyone around the table pitches in and helps to braai the pork strips to delicious golden perfection while enjoying a lot of soju and makgeolli. Different, but definitely a must try if you come to Korea. If you order just one meal, you will get all the side dishes for free. Next, we enjoy the beautiful cherry blossoms as we walk through the streets of Seoul to meet Tobias at the workshop, a pop-up bar created in an old mechanic shop not far from Itaewon. He gives us a sneak peek into the workings of his wine in a cake concept and talks to us about the business of importing South African wines to Asia. Born in Joburg, moved down to Free State, and the big start. I lived there for my old primary school and then my dad's job moved around a lot, he was a contractor so they decided to send me down to Stellenbosch, not a bad place to go to high school. Um, lived in the boarding school there, Stellenbosch I, graduated and then went to university, Stellenbosch, stayed there four years, um, met my, my wife there, uh, I decided after university couldn't find a job. I mean, it's always that catch for me to need experience, but when are you going to get experience? Um, so, a <clears throat> friend of mine gave me a, a email and he said, if I go teach in Korea, they pay your flights, they pay your apartments, and a round trip ticket, and $2,000 a month. He came over, uh, worked here for a bit, and I saw there's a bit of a gap in the market for wine. And I played around with the concepts and because there's a lot of wine in Korea. South Africa, not that well represented, uh, but we are getting there. So I looked at something different. Um, and then I came across a concept that's uh, keg wines, uh, wine on tap. And then looked into how to develop it and, and found uh, the right technology, which actually preserves the wine amazingly well, better than the, than the bottle. Um, so we started playing around with that and um, from there on it grew. Inspired by its namesake in Stellenbosch, Tobias opened the hidden cellar in Seoul using the bottle store concept from back home. Customers grab a seat around the tables in the cellar and help themselves to their favorite drinks and snacks from the shelves. Tobias's understanding of the Korean way of socializing, their love for good food and wine mixed with his own passion for South African wines turned out to be a winning recipe for his business model. When not at the bar or restaurant, Tobias is involved with several other proudly South African initiatives, such as the South African Korean Chamber of Commerce and the annual Castle Bry Camp that brings South Africans in Korea together for a bit of home away from home. Uh, and then we had the opportunity this year to open up the workshop. Um, 
um, which we are, we are now, and uh, with a lot of help from SAB Miller, uh, we created this amazing pop-up uh, that focuses a bit on, on some of their brands, uh, mainly Pilsen and Oco, um, and in Nenitz. It used to be a mechanic shop, so we decided it's just going to keep the floor the same, <clears throat> leave the parking lines, leave the, the chevron on the, on the walls, and just keep a nice rustic after work for a few beers. Every year we, uh, we do a dry camp, um, the castle dry camp. We've got castle, we've got South African wine, and uh, we have a, it's a great time. Bra Republic does the uh, full lamb on the spit, um, and it's great fun, great fun. To be honest, we're, we're very tough on ourselves, South Africans. Uh, we love to complain. Um, but there's no place like home. And that's what runs through every South African I meet here. Yeah. yeah, we can give our, our, our country a lot of stick. Um, but if, if the choice is there, everyone's like, no, I want to live back home. I have a big family. Um, I'm, the, I'm the baby of, of four kids. Um, we love on the kids. So um, that I miss. Uh, and just sitting at home, watching cricket. Boxing day test, stuff like small things. And if you want to dry, just go quickly go outside, light the fire, done. Um, I miss either uh, a boat that my old man and I built together. I miss that quite a bit because uh, it's in uh, Bushman's River Mouth now. We'll go back in December. <laughs> and we are breaking free now wherever we go. Next week, we say so long to Seoul and go further south to Busan in Jeju Island. But not before Chantal Terblanc shows us around her neighborhood and we talk about Korean contrasts. Don't miss episode three. For updates, subscribe or like us on your preferred social media platform and we will be in touch. See you then. And we are breaking